ಚಾಣು ಆನಂದಮಾನಂದಕರಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಪ್ರೇಮಸ್ವೂಪ ವ್ರಜಭಾವಯುಕ್ತ ಯೋಗೀಂದ್ರಮೀಢ್ಯವರೋಗ ವೈದ್ಯ ಗುರು ಕೃಪಾಲು ಪ್ರಣಮ ವ್ಯಾಧರಣ ಧ್ರುವ ವಿಜೇಂದ್ರ ಕುಬ್ಜಾ ಕಿ ಮುನಾಮಧಿ ಕಂ ತತ್ಸುದ ವಂಶ ಕೋವಿದುರಸ್ಯಾದವಪತೆ ರುಗ್ರಸ ಕಂ ಪೌರುಷ ಭಕ್ತುಷ್ಯತಿ ಕೇವಲ ನ ಚುಣೈರ್ಭಕ್ತಿ ಮಾಧವ ನಮ ಕಮಲಾಯ ನಮ ಕಮಲ ಕಮಲ ಪಾಯ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಕಮಲೇ ಕ್ಷಣ ಯೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಾಣ ವಿದಾತಿ ಪೂರ್ವ ಯೋ ವೈ ವೇದಾಂಶ್ಚ ಪ್ರಹಿಣೋತಿ ತಸ್ಮೈ ತಗ್ವಂ ಹ ದೇವಮಾತ್ಮಬುಿ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ ಮುಮುಕ್ಷುರ್ವೈ ಶರಣಮಹಂ ಪ್ರಪದ್ಯೇ ಇನ್ಕ್ವಿಸಿಟಿವ್ ಸೋಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅ ಕ್ಯೂ ಎನ್ ಎ ಸೆಷನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈವ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಡನ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಲಾಸ್ಟ್ ಫ್ಯೂ ಸಂಡೇಸ್ so you are invited to ask your questions and um while you think about your questions give you some time let's do a, a short kirtan radhe 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 shri radhe 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 radhe Thank you. 
राधा रानी महारानी की जय श्रीमद सदगुरु सरकार की जय वृंदावन बिहारी लाल की जय If you have a question please raise your hand and I will need someone to give the mic Radhe radhe Who has question sorry No one yet I think they're thinking about it this okay. one Radhe Radhe Didi, um, I just have a question about, I know according to the Raga Nuga Bhakti that um, it doesn't really matter uh, the external rules, you know, whether you take a bath, which way you face, it, it really doesn't matter. But there are also certain um, rules that are written according to the vastu shastra like you know, all the temples normally the buildings they face the east um as kids we were told not to sleep with your head facing north um certain placements of the things around the house and similar in the chinese tradition also feng shui so vastu how important are those things and how uh, what kind of role do they really play let's say that uh, you know some uh, there is an aspiring devotee and they're getting a house built so it's it's good to go according to vastu shastra and the rules of vastu they're just very logical rules they're just logical rules uh, one of the rules is that you don't keep anything broken or um, very old that you don't use the energy from those things is detrimental to you uh don't have clutter around because it will clutter up your mind so th there are these rules that make a lot of sense but let's say so if one is going to get a house built why not go th go with the uh, the the vastu shastra but if your house is already built and everything is the directions don't match um i would say it's okay it's not not a uh, it's not of any much consequence um no, of no consequence in fact because bhakti will take care of everything um but if there is a choice and um, those rules are good uh, they just make logical sense so it's good to follow them as much as we can now let's say somebody's wanting to buy a house not build it and there is no house available on the market that is been built according to vastu rules then i would say forget it it's okay but as much as possible if 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 it is possible those rules just make sense logical sense there's no there's no uh, miracle in that there's no uh, nothing that is uh, nothing that doesn't make sense if you look at them and then the feng shui is based on vastu and it's similar rules Radhe Radhe, any other question? Didi, I have one question. Um, right now there is uh, one term actually, I uh, see a lot of people talking who doesn't practice bhakti, I believe. They say live in present. So just be your thoughts to be in present. So does our uh, Ved, uh, Vedas, Shastras, has anything in that regards does they say it like live in present or something because gita says something which make logical sense and we didn't hear like something be in present or something so just wanted to get the clarity the the um, way that the the reasoning behind saying stay in the present that that is the important thing so our scriptures saints they do tell us don't worry about the past because it's gone nothing can be done now and from this this point of view they say live in the present um what's done is done and those karm those actions will bear fruit and you can't do anything about it so let it go and uh, what is going to happen in the future 
the, you have no control over it, except you, only thing you can do is to be in the present and perform the actions that will give you the desirable fruits in the future. So what, what the scriptures say is concentrate on Kriyaman Karm. Kriyaman Karm are the actions that we all have, we humans are, have been given the freedom to perform. So they say don't worry about Sanchit, like humiliated actions because they've already been performed. And so, and, and don't think about the Prarabdha Karm because part of the, a small part of the sanchit karma, accumulated actions, will bear fruit in this life, and those are our destiny-forming actions. So there also, we don't have any control over those because we've already performed those actions. So our scriptures and our um, Guru Jan, saints, they say, concentrate on kriyaman karma. And so in this way, they say, stay in the present. Now, in the world, especially in the Western world, the reasoning behind saying, stay in the present, I suppose it's similar reasoning. The stay in the present, don't worry about the past, don't fret about the future. But perhaps they're not saying in the way the scriptures have said it. They don't mean it um, in the same way as the scriptures mean it, that stay in the present, meaning do the right thing in the present so that you can reap the, the desirable fruits in the future. It just, make, it just makes sense to stay in the present. Of course, we must learn from the past, but never worry about the future. And the only way we can really move forward is to stay in the present. Kriya Manka. Um, so, Maharaji tells us that everything that we do or think should be in the service of God and Guru. Um, so, some of the kirtans um, that Maharaji composed, like they, they're about wanting to meet God and having their darshan, and that's kind of for like your own self happiness. So, how do I? Um, do Rupthyan and those kirtans while also being selfless? So when you uh, are singing Maharaji's composition such as Darshan Dena Nanda Dulare, oh, I desire your darshan, O Shri Krishna. And so your question is, how do I make it into an act of seva when I'm just desiring his darshan for my own happiness? In fact, um, what you can do by, by desiring to, the desire to see him, to have his darshan, should be there because I want to see you so that I may serve you. I want to see you so that I may feed you with my own hands, so that I may make your bed for you and when you lay down, I want to massage your lotus feet. I want to serve you, therefore I want to see you. So in this way we make it into selfless seva. We, and uh, we don't become selfish then. Although that kind of selfishness is the best kind of selfishness there is, however, we, we are aspiring to become completely selfless. So that is the way, that is the reason, that is the, sorry, the way we can become selfless and we can, we, by desiring to serve Radha and Krishna. And uh, for that reason, we must desire to have the darshan. the last few sessions have I answered all your questions? <laughs> Radhe Radhe Didi. Radhe Radhe. Um, so as we, uh, as we practice bhakti, there is this, um, at times there is a sense of pride that comes in, oh I'm having that bow, I'm getting that tears. And we started getting pride for ourselves, like, oh, we are, we are doing better bhakti or something like that. 
how to uh, we have to be selfless and we uh, pride should not be even coming right uh, so how to get rid of that pride or what is that action that we should take to be nishkam so let's say the pride is a very sneaky thief that steals our devotion away and so when we become proud of the sadhana we are doing proud pride when, when the pride comes in due to the tears we are shedding uh, we must think these tears are not my own earning they are the gift from god and guru so i should not become proud it, it's a gift from my gurudev it's a gift from my ishtadev and whenever pride comes in and it, it will come very often and oftentimes we don't realize it's even there but um, when we do realize it and we must try to catch it then the way to think at that point is i am not i'm not the one uh, who is responsible for this god and guru have given me this gift so it's it's not it's not um, my doing these are gifts and so i will be proud but i'll be proud of my guru i'll be proud of my ishtadev pride is something we will all always have until maya leaves us but that pride can be diverted as abhiman as abhiman jai jani bhore main sevak main sevak raghupati pati more as lakshman ji says i want to be always proud of the fact that i am your humble servant so pride is going to be there and so we must divert it towards god and guru that i am an ordinary person but my guru is so great and i'm proud of being his servant i'm proud of being the servant of shri radha and krishna so pride is going to be there let's divert it and then also we must think that that i am not so good and so spiritual and so godly that tears will come into my eyes my guru is giving me these tears and it's not my doing so i i'm not going to be proud of them sometimes questions uh, can be a question can be asked even if you know the answer already and i say this because maybe someone else needs to hear that question so if you have any such question that you want the answer to be heard by by everyone and it's not a bad idea to uh, also revise what we know already to rep- to to hear what we already know didi i have one didi anger how to control it I mean, you. Why you ask me this? <laughs> <laughs> Didi, it's uh, very tough, actually. Uh, I mean, it's happening. Uh, Sometimes we are able to control uh, because we know that uh, things, but it's tough. It is tough. Yes. Anger. So anger will come <laughs> when we want something and it's not. We don't get it. <coughs> Basically, we must understand that when we don't get what we want, we become angry. I I want this but I didn't get it and it doesn't have to be a thing a, a tangible object it doesn't have to be like I wanted um, a new car and I didn't get it so I'm angry it doesn't have to be anything like that it could be I wanted I wanted to be friends with her and she doesn't want to be friends with me I didn't get that and so I'm angry I um wanted to I wanted to Uh, succeed in this endeavor but i didn't so you get angry desire is the reason behind anger desire has two children well it has many but two main ones anger and greed so when we get what we want we become greedy when we don't want when we don't get what we have desired we become angry plain and simple so it could be respect from someone it could be love of someone it could be a tangible thing also so we when we don't get it we become angry so we must um, we must 
analyze it. Why am I getting angry? And this is why Sri Maharaji takes us through the scriptures and says, anger comes from unfulfillment of desire due to the desire being, uh, not being fulfilled. All right, then why do I have this desire? Why do I have desires? What's the reason behind desire? Well, the desire, uh, all the desires that I have are due to attachments. Sangat Sanjayate Kama Bhagavad Gita. So, when attachments, when we form attachments in the world, we start desiring those objects or, or the, those people that we have formed attachment to. So, why do I get attached? What's the reason behind attachment? And again, the Bhagavad Gita says that when you think um, repeatedly about someone and, and you think uh, he's going to make me happy or she's going to make me happy, they're going to make me happy, we form our attachment. When we think about a thing, an object, um, it's going to make me happy. If I could get that, I would be very happy. If I could get that diamond necklace, I would be very happy. If I can get that uh, BMW, I'd be very happy. It could be anything like that. So, because we want happiness from the world, we form our attachments in the world. And those attachments lead to desires. Desires lead to anger and greed. So the root cause is that we are looking for happiness. So then we have to convince ourselves, we have to convince the mind, look, you want happiness. And you pinned all your hopes on this one person and you became disappointed you're getting angry now, but you shouldn't be angry. Get angry at yourself. Again, anger should be diverted towards the self. Now, why am I so foolish that I want respect from someone? Um, why am I so um, foolish that I want things of the world to make me happy? Why? And, and that anger not to, should be diverted, directed not at a person, <laughs> but at ourselves. That how is it that I have been living without, without God for so long? How foolish I am, how, how um, ignorant I am. So we can, just like with, with, um, with pride, we can divert anger towards ourselves. We can also divert the anger towards anger. Krodha krodhe kathannute. Scriptures have said, get angry at anger itself. When anger comes, and again, due to no matter what circumstance, then we should say to anger, how dare you come to me? You are putting my mind, it's as if you have put my mind on fire. You have started a fire, my mind is burning in the fire. Because anger does burn up us internally. So how dare you come and damage my mind like this? I don't want you over here. So, the scriptures and saints have said, get angry at anger itself. And then, you know, a very powerful method is to just reason it out. Why am I feeling angry? Okay, it's because of this, it's because of this, it's because of this. It's because I, I'm wanting happiness in the world. Mother is thinking, why didn't my son listen to me? Why does he not, why doesn't he do what I want him to do? He has to know it's for his own good that I'm telling him this and he doesn't listen to her, she gets angry at him. One scenario, right? But then, if she is wise, she will, if she has been instructed by a true guru, then she'll say, okay, let me reason it out. Why am I feeling angry? And then she'll say, okay, it's because of my desire. Why do I have desire, attachment? Why do I have attachment? Because I've thought again and again that there's happiness in this child of mine. So, is my child at fault? for not obeying me or am I at fault for expecting him to obey me, for expecting him to make me so happy. Sri Maharaji used to say, when, you, when parents, when they think about their child, they only think one way, that this child is going to make me proud. This child is going to create a name. People will say, oh, that's his mother, so-and-so's mother, that's so-and-so's father. This child will become so good so well educated and so well known and everybody will know her name, everybody will know him. That's the only way they think. So when, it, when that doesn't happen, they become very 
angry and they become frustrated, depressed. But we must think, okay, well, this child of mine didn't listen to me, but um, I already expected it because I have already thought about this, that he may listen to me or he may not listen to me or he may listen to me sometimes and sometimes disobey me. Sometimes he may revolt against me. He might even kill me one day. I have already thought about all these scenarios. So someone who thinks about this, all this, with knowledge, knowledgeable person, then says, okay, I'm not gonna get angry. I'm not going to get angry because I have looked at all the scenarios and have accepted them all. So whenever we do get angry, we should reason it with ourselves, knowing what we know now. And who does not get angry? Everybody gets angry. It's just that now we need to control our anger because uh, we have the tools with which we can do it. We do have the tools with which we can do that. So with the knowledge that we have been given, the knowledge is, um, is a sword, it's a, it's a weapon. And um, ignorance uh, has to be slain. Uh, we must slay ignorance using the weapon of knowledge given by our Guru. A deep understanding is essential, and, and this is what Sri Maharaji has given. We went deeply into every subject and, and summarized the scriptures so that we may understand it in a very short period of time. And so then the Prem Ras Siddhant, the philosophy of divine love, um, when anger comes, when greed comes, when thoughts of hatred come in, that's when we need to use uh, this mighty weapon of knowledge. Children and teens, think about your questions. So it's about faith. We have been hearing this for, you know, every day we hear and read about it, that uh, on the path of this devotion, faith is one of the, the most important uh, needs that we need to do, actually, the element. Now, it is easier to practice that when everything is going good in life. Um, but when some challenges come, in those times, how to um, increase or even strengthen our faith during those challenges, the difficult times. Right. <coughs> um, indeed, faith is so important that uh, saints say, Adho Shraddha, first of all, you must have Shraddha, you must have faith. And that faith gets uh, shaken when uh, we are faced with challenges. Um, Again, I will say the knowledge acts as a very powerful weapon to destroy the, any doubt that may come. And or it, it will help us to destroy the tendency to, tendency for the faith to be reduced. So when that knowledge, uh, when we bring that knowledge into our mind, then we are able to think, well, I know that God and Guru, they test me. So this is the test that I'm going through. Then the mind says, really? After all these years still being tested? <laughs> when will this test end? When will this testing end? And uh, apparently uh, it can go on for a long time. Um, and, um, and it does. Uh, the, the, the test is, look at <laughs> Lord Krishna with the gopis. How many tests he put them through? And, it, and the gopis just, uh, he, he uh, he took this test, then he took that test, then that one, and, and the test kept, kept on getting in harder and harder. And uh, that's when we need to remember that um, my guru and uh, my Ishtadev, they're, uh, they're after me too. They just want me to improve so much. Um, and they, they're testing me so that I may improve. I know it's disheartening at times, but uh, they know what they're doing, and uh, I will always pray to them for 
for the strength to pass the, these tests. Sri Maharaj often used to say, well, he, would, he said to one of the devotees, it was a very hard test that she went through in life. And Maharaj said, you pass the test with flying colors. Um, and he, he would say, why are you afraid of being tested? But we are human. So we get shaken and say, it's a lot of tests. But um, at the same time, we know that we don't know so much. We, don't, we hardly know anything. And God and Guru know everything. So just that faith that they know what they're doing. Even though I may not understand it, I don't understand it. I, you know, I admit I don't understand, but I'm, how can I understand the ways of the divine? But uh, God and Guru do know, and uh, this will strengthen me. By going through this test, I uh, will become stronger. That's the only way to, by doing sadhana, by literally crying out in desperation, to God and, and even more, um, even more importantly, to the Guru, to our Guru, that um, I'm just an ordinary person. And these tests are very hard for me. Just in communicating that, that the, this test is very tough for me. Um, and I don't know if I can pass this, if I can, I can go through this. But at the same time, you are here with me. Uh, are you here with me? Are you here with me? And let me know that you're here with me. Just crying out to God and Guru when it gets really tough and always knowing that I don't know anything and God and Guru know everything, so uh, they must really want me to improve because they're taking uh, a lot of tests. These are a lot of tests that I'm going through. And it's a fact that Maharaji would say that you know, if, you're, if you're a good student, the teacher wants you to get better. So the teacher will give you harder and harder tests. That is a fact. So these tests are for our own good, although when we are being tested, it's not so easy to think that way, but there's no other way. There's just no other way. By just doing sadhana, we improve every day by doing daily sadhana, that, that faith is being built internally, that strength is coming in internally. It's just like, when we are eating, someone is eating healthy food and, and that person thinks, oh, I'm the same as I was when I was eating unhealthy food, <laughs> junk food. But over a period of time, it shows up. Oh yeah, healthy food. Oh yes, now I feel it. It takes, it takes time. In the very same way the sadhana we are doing, it, it seems like I hear it from a lot of people and the mind does say, I'm not improving. I'm just the same as I was 20 years ago. 30, 40 years ago, that's not true. But we feel that way. That improvement is there. And when we think about it, really think about it, no, no, the improvement is there. I have improved, of course. Yes, I have a long way to go, but I have also improved. So that strength comes in uh, due to, through diligent practice of devotion. Um, and the three concepts, satsang, seva, sadhana, there's nothing else. Um, and then, although we go through tests, anybody not going through tests in life? Let me raise your hand. Anyone who has not been tested a lot? I, I know, very small children, probably not. I don't mean math tests or science tests. But by giving those tests, you know that God and Guru give you tests as well. They give us tests. They put us through tests. So these. So when you're actually going through those challenges and stuff, of course, and then you ask asking help from your guru, you know, from God, isn't that then being selfish? That is something we need to. No, it's it's actually not. Give me, please, give like me. Instead of just accepting and surrendering, saying, "Okay, well, this is also a gift from you." You know, yes, it doesn't seem like a nice gift, but yes, it is a <laughs> gift. Um, but then again, like asking for help, saying, "Like, you know, help me to go through this, or give me the help strength." Me, so, isn't that strength. selfish? That is actually uh, needed. It's necessary. It's very necessary that you know. I am. I'm. I'm too small and <laughs> these tests are big and you are too great for me to understand you. And I need that understanding, I need your grace 
because nothing can happen without your grace. It's absolutely allowed. It's allowed for us. I'll just share a personal story. When Sri Maharaj Ji said to me, I'm going to give you the seva of preaching, um, I accepted it because I had faith that even though I don't think that I can do it, um, but he, he is all-knowing, so he knows. And then when I started to um, study, so to speak, for lack of a better word, then there were many things I wasn't understanding, and ultimately I just cried out to Sri Maharaji. And I said this, I said, I'm too small. This task is too formidable. It's a very daunting task. I cannot do it. I, I can't do it by myself and I need your special grace. I, I didn't think I said special grace, grace is always special. I need your grace, I, I need your help. I'm not, I'm not getting this by myself. And, um, and Maharaji responded, of course, I started understanding everything. Uh, but the fact is that if we don't ask God for that, if we don't ask our Guru, then who are we going to ask? So that's absolutely allowed. It, because this is to strengthen my devotion. You're not asking for things of the world. You're not saying, take this test away. And you're not saying that. The test is your gift, but I also need your, I need you to, I need the strength. Please stay, please give me the strength that will help me pass this. So that's absolutely allowed. You'll still be selfless. Teenagers, kiddies, R&R. <laughs> Radhe Radhe Devi Ji, Radhe Radhe. Um, Shri Maharaj Ji also says that sometimes um, we don't have to really get angry from the inside, but we have to, in the world, pretend that we are angry. Because if we don't, then maybe our kids won't listen to us or maybe our you know our coworkers or somebody we need to get the work done from um and but it is like practicing anything like you you practice to be happy and then eventually you end up being happy and you practice too much of being angry and you end up being angry right so how do you balance that like i know i have to get angry at people because they're not listening to me or my point is not getting across but on the other hand, when I feel like it has internally disturbed me, um, then I just say, should I just be detached at this point in time? Should I just walk away? Because even pretending is not the right thing to do. Right. So yes, there are, there are times when you have to show your anger. And so first of all, we have to say, OK, now I know I'm, I'm not going to get angry on the inside, but I must. I must say this to someone who is working uh, in my subordinates, let's say at work, your subordinates, your children, um, whoever it may be, that there's a, there's a reason for you to show your anger. So first of all, we must say, okay, I'm just, you know, make sure that I'm not going to be really angry. I'm just gonna show this. Um, and you're saying that if that, even the show of anger starts working on you, so then it's, uh, you, you just uh, sometimes select, you cho choose not to even get angry, not to even show your anger. That, you know, until I can detach myself from my words and then not really get angry, let me not say anything in this situation. Let me handle it another way. The trick is to catch that anger, that thought of anger when it's just, when it's come in. We we uh, and that's not a good, it's not what you're asking. But we all we're all tormented by anger. Anger is something that's. But if we allow it to overtake us, that anger makes us into it makes us look very very uh, demonic. Anger. Nobody wants to see an angry person. You could see a, you could. Oh, I, can, I can look at a greedy person, I can look at an envious person, or angry person, no thanks. Even a child doesn't want to see angry, an angry parent, oh, I'm, I'm stay away. Um, because 
it's not a pretty sight. So even on the outside, anger doesn't look good. So anger is very damaging. So overall, what we, um, what we should do, what we need to do is to really become aware of anger and that mindful living that I am getting angry right now. And that's why it's a good idea to speak little and to think before we speak and to be very deliberate in what we do and not to react right away. It's all part of a system that, you know, I will just take my time when somebody says something, I'm not gonna just fly off the handle and, you know, let them have it. Um, and then you know, we say, you know, we'll be yaad rakhega. And Maharaj Ji says, wo kya yaad rakhega? Haani tumhari ho rahi, tum yaad rakhoge. You know, when we say to some, about someone, that you'll always remember this because I'm gonna, treat you so unkindly, I'm gonna speak such words that you'll remember them. The other person may or may not remember our angry words, but we will remember them. So this whole thing about anger, we must try to catch it as soon as it comes into the mind. And we are all able to catch it. It's just that we need to train our mind to um, be very deliberate, that I don't have to react to his words, to her behavior, I don't have to. Let me do it another way. I've been doing it this way. Let me try it another way. That, let me just wait. And that counting to 10, aren't children taught that way? Count to 10, right? It's good for small children. It's good for adults, uh, big children too. I count to 10, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm not going to get angry. Let me just count to 10, let me just cool off. Um, kids know the story that, uh, that um, your teachers went through this uh, this morning, right? Which story am I thinking about? The story of anger? Are the kids here? Shalbri, do you remember that story? Of who got angry at whom? Remember the dead snake? Parikshit. Parikshit got angry. Yes, so he got angry, put the dead snake around the sages. Uh, neck and then the sage's son got angry. So um, two people were getting angry, but the one who said you should not be angry, that was the sage himself. He said you shouldn't have gotten angry. Uh, and that's a wonderful way to think, isn't it? That uh, what the sage said to his son, he said you shouldn't have gotten angry because the king's, uh, one behavior of the king does not define him. It's just like when we make one mistake, that doesn't mean that we only make mistakes. One mistake in life doesn't define us. Uh, even many mistakes in life don't define us. So king's one mistake doesn't define him. The king is a good person. So replace the, the king with my sister, my friend, my fellow worker, my mother, my father, wife, husband, child, that this, why should I be angry? Because this, these words from my loved ones, they don't define him, they don't define her. So using the knowledge we've been given, that knowledge is the most powerful tool we have. Maharaji used to say that you listen to the knowledge and then after that you kind of forget it. But that's where we are lacking. We need to hear it again and again, avritti rasakritu padeshat, and then we need to put it in daily practice. Sometimes you think, oh, that was knowledge, I've heard it, I heard the lecture, but we can practice it in daily life and uh, we can get better. Whether it's about anger or greed or envy, any situation that, um, that we are dealing with, the wonderful thing is that Sri Maharaji has given us um, a solution for all the um, problems that we have. Didi, oftentimes, like, well, one of the things I wonder is, like, uh, for whatever uh, actions we did in the previous life, uh, sometimes we have to bear consequences in the current life, whereas we don't have the visibility into what might we might have done. So uh, my question is, like, as a human being, like, how do I know what, what is my balance of karmas? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, today we have an app to know calories. <laughs> we, we know how much is bank balance, but we don't know our past worth. 
karma. So um, how do we know and what does God give any indication for us uh, through our devotion? Um, yeah, so th those are the things that come to my mind what sometimes. Is my balance? When it comes to balance, we're talking about infinity here, unlimited here, countless, innumerable. Um, calories and so on are limited, so we can, there's an app for that. For this, there is no app, but all we can do is, again, what we have done already, no guru will tell you, oh, look how much you've done in the past and this is how much you have left. Because it's always gonna be, you have made unlimited mistakes and you've done unlimited devotion and you've done unlimited good virtuous deeds also. Everything is unlimited. Now, how many are you gonna have to pay for in this life? How many good deeds, how many, how many pious, how many sinful deeds, how many devotional deeds? Are you going to are going to bear fruit in this life? Saints know because uh, they have the same knowledge as God. They're the saint knows, but um, he will never say because it's not important. Um, and there there are there are people fortune tellers, people who who astrologers who will say this and this is going to happen. Those actions are going to come into play. It's an exact science, but only a saint will know the exact, exact science. And saints don't, they will never tell us about anything like this. Because this would mean that everybody will come to them wanting to know this. And it doesn't help anyone to know any of this. That's why we, uh, all we should do is to do our best. Do the, what we have been taught. I'll do my devotion, I will balance my worldly life with my spiritual life. I will balance my life by bringing God into my mind and I'm taking care of myself, my, my family, um, financially, you know, physically, but I will bring God into my life and I will do my duty without attachment. All we can do is do that. And um, the rest we'll leave to God. Because if we were to know, it would be devastating, wouldn't it be? That you know, oh, I'm, uh, I, I was the, I was a king of England, or I was a queen of whatever place it is, and I was a multi-billionaire, and now I don't even have a job. It would be very distressing. Or, oh my goodness, I committed so many murders. How could we live with ourselves if we were told that this is what you did in your last life? It's best that we don't remember. People say, you know, if only I had memory of my previous life. I say it's good that we don't remember anything because it would be devastating. It would be devastating. Imagine Hitler, whenever he does receive the human form again, and he, he is given that memory, you killed millions of innocent people. How would that person feel? How would he feel? And, and after having gone through thousands and maybe millions of births in lower forms of life and after going through hell and all that, then he's born a human because he's, he also has done devotion. How would he feel knowing I killed millions of people, innocent people? How could he live with himself? So in the same way, we cannot live with ourselves. We would not be able to. So it's a good thing we don't know. So all, all we can do is like present life. That's it. Again, Kriyaman. <laughs> Kriyaman. Sure. Thank you. Okay. Sharavadi. Uh, Radhe Radhe. Radhe. So um, my question was like, uh, how do you like also like think about God, not only when it's like you're in trouble or like it's a problem, but then also like, you know, it's when it's the good times. That's yeah, good I question. Yeah. Right. So um, you've heard about Rup Dhyan in Gurukul and by listening to lectures, right? You've heard about Rup Dhyan that no matter where you are, you just um, think about God. That is, let's say if you're studying or you're playing, you're at home um, watching TV, just from time to time, just think, Lord Krishna is with me, God is with me. And so you're not going, you're not thinking of him when you're in trouble only, but you're thinking of him, trying to think of him every day. So you get accustomed to thinking that he's always around me, he's always with me. So wherever you are, you just do Rup Dhyan. And sometimes you can't even close, you, you're not going to be able to close your eyes, and that's okay. Just as he is with me, he is, uh, 
he's sitting over there, he's sitting over there. And you know, you're maybe in your, in your classroom, I don't, sorry to remind you of school right now, but let's say you're in your classroom and uh, you just visualize him to be where the teacher is on the teacher's desk or on the ceiling somewhere and you kind of look up every so often just to remind yourself that he's always with you. So that way you're not just going to him in times of trouble, but all the time you're trying to remember him. Oh, I thought Radha was going to ask a question. <laughs> we have three minutes left if you have one question. Um, so one struggle I have is um, balancing school and coming to Ulkunj. And um, recently especially, um, now that I have more freedom being in college, I'm able to come back more often. I mean, I guess in high school I was too, but I'm able to drive now. So um, I'm just usually like I get really, it, it's a hard decision for me to do my schoolwork if I have a lot of stuff to do or come here and try to do seva and satsang. Um, so how do I balance those two? Sometimes um, it, it becomes problematic, you know, what do I do? Do I study? Do I, I think maybe, you know, when, when it's possible, you can bring your books here too, <laughs> and Yugal Kunj is second home for you. So you can take some time studying, but then, you know, when, when possible, it's not always going to be possible, when, when possible, you can do that. But then you have to use your discretion that, you know, I have to study for this. So you just concentrate on studying at that time so that you may come to your satsang um, with a free mind afterwards. But it is, um, Sri Maharaj always emphasized, you know, doing well in studies. And I know I don't have to tell you you're a very diligent student, um, but it, you, knew, you do need to study hard. At the same time, um, you need devotion too. So there are times when you'll be able to come more often, there are times when you're able to come less often. So do the best you can. Um, if you can bring your books over here and study and then also do satsang, uh, fine. If not, then do your studying and then come with a free mind. It's a wonderful thing that you have that kind of question at that age. That, you know, um, it's great, I, great that you know about all this, you know about the importance of sadhana, you know about the importance of, of satsang, that you have this question. I think it's incredible. All you um, teenagers and young adults are very, very fortunate, and preteens also. Very, very fortunate. One minute left. So we'll do Kirtan for one minute. <clears throat> Radhe Govinda Govinda Radhe Radhe Govinda Radhe Govinda Govinda Radhe Radhe Govinda Radhe Radhe Govinda Radhe Radhe Govinda Radhe Radhe Oh. Uh -huh. 